We were just laughing about the uh, virtues of Ooh, uh, unlimited data. Right. You know. Got to have it. I mean, if, if you're streaming oh. video, uh, if you're streaming your cable, I which know. a lot of people are doing now, you, you really kind of have to do The Wi-Fi in this place is so shoddy, and we can't even stream our own Facebook show on it most of the time, so you have to use the My data. ring came through. I can see that a package is being picked up at my house right now. Oh, that's now. awesome. Yeah. Who's dropping mm -hmm. it off? Actually, no, I donated to Big Brothers Big Sisters, and so they came to pick up the Dude, package. Isn't that cool? You can see it. I love it. Um, back to the data thing. Real quick. <laughs> you realize, though, in like not that long, like I, I would say within the next decade, mm -hmm. we're going to be laughed at for days that we were paying for data. Like I, I really do, and maybe this is just the the utopian optimism in me, but like I think that the internet will become a public utility. Well, yes, is that decade. the whole 8G thing? Well. Well, we're 8G. going to 8G now? Yeah. No, you're we're very going to 5G. I know, I know, but we're like, so 8G is up and coming. And so then they're like, basically oh, everywhere is going to, you won't need data. Everybody's, the whole yeah. world's going to be connected. Mm. I think just so making more. the internet a yeah. publicly regulated yeah. utility, like your water bill or your sewer, I think that that works out so much better for so many people. And you're not getting gouged by these monolith uh, right. monopoly Wait. media Well, and there's companies. all these different plans, too. Like, I, I've been trying to deal with this with my parents because they mm -hmm. they cut the, the cord, and they're, <gasps> and they're going to... Congrats to them. We have, yeah. we, we're, we're figuring out, like, which one that we want to use with them, and, and we currently use uh, DirecTV Now, which is mm -hmm. AT&T yeah. TV and all that, and they have it, but they didn't want to get, like, the higher internet plan, so they're constantly buffering, and they're like, what's wrong? This is stupid. I just want cable. <laughs> right. I'm like, no, you have to pay the extra money for a better, like, internet, internet. speed because yeah. that's the key. I yeah. mean... It just it doesn't function properly. It's not like just what you use on your iPad to go on mm -hmm. Facebook right, now. Right. Like you need a lot more streaming. Oh yeah. I will say this though. Like if you have the right internet speeds, the the streaming TV services oh, it's excellent. are pretty flawless. Yeah. Like it does hiccup sometimes, but my cable used to hiccup sometimes. I'd get yeah. so pissed. Like what is wrong? Oh. It's it's plugged into the wall. Why is I it not working? So right? many issues with my cable, and then I have Direct TV, and they'd be like, "Oh, it's weather." I'm like. Oh, it's weather. <laughs> I like it when it's you call the line good. and the automated really? service is like, we're experiencing some weather fluctuations <laughs> no, here. Not. I live in Phoenix, really Arizona. Serious. There's no weather here. Liars. Well, you know what? It, it's BS, too, because when the weather's great, I don't even want to be inside yeah. watching TV. Yeah. Yeah. I'm only in there no. when it's raining or snowing because there's it's nothing terrible. else to do. I'm a wannabe cord cutter. I just don't have I the know. gumption Dude, to do it. There's no regret. It's fantastic. Exactly. There's no regret. You won't regret it. I know my sisters recently, and they cut a while back, so they were showing me how and mm. I'm like this is amazing immediately I you'll be like this is way better I wouldn't be able to find to watch what I wanted right. like, I had no the only thing was no HGTV well, uh, or we, like got it on YouTube TV yeah. you can get it yeah so there is no, a way a some we can't I've been trying I've been Yo, wanting YouTube to cut TV. the cord on YouTube but, TV but um, they don't like have a, lifetime nobody has a lifetime channel is it is lifetime really Honestly, worth an extra hundred dollars a month no yeah okay so when you have multiple <laughs> like services cares? though streaming services does it add up to your bill anyway no not even close i'm saving about a hundred dollars every single month well it depends i mean if you have like if yeah it depends on how many you have well, like, i already had have, netflix you I was have, yes for but it. if you have like 18 you don't need to have multiple cable streaming services mm -hmm. you should just pick the one that best suits you yeah, yeah. but yes if you have like netflix and you have a cable streaming service, and then you have Disney Plus, or yeah. HBO, and, Prime and video. All, yeah. I got it all. But the thing is, you Hello. don't you don't need all of it. Right. I mean, if you, you, the thing is, if you're buying like an entire cable streaming service just for one channel, yeah, you probably need to read. Well, the thing is, I'm like one day, can't it just be <laughs> right? like, okay, I want to get my local TV stations, right. and then I want to choose five no. other things. Yeah, no I agree. Five, That's like not the I want Bravo, I want yeah. E, I want HGTV, I want. You know what I mean? Like, can I just? But pick we're my closer to that I now household? than what we were before. Yes. Yeah. I feel like we're going that direction. So when that happens, then help. I'll cut the cord. The problem with that, though, is um, depending on their broadcast rights that those those companies own, they charge cable providers, even the streaming services, um, completely different amounts based upon how much they're in the hole. So like ESPN. If you have ESPN on your cable package, regardless of what package you have, that's driving your price up like $25 a month alone. Right. Really? Because ESPN pays billions in rights fees for the sporting events that for you watch on events. it. Now, a, a Lifetime Network, for example, their fees are producing movies all the time. Like, they, they actually have a tremendous amount of costs up front they to produce out, all those man. films because they're cranking them. They are. Um, the they're already getting ready for next year's ones. Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> but there are other channels that are really I'm cheap like, and, yeah. like, they cost yeah. you almost nothing. Anyway, yeah. we've been talking about this for 15 minutes now. This isn't even what we're talking about. <laughs>
It's just random conversation. This is the after uh-huh. show in a nutshell, though. It's like whatever we're discussing in the 30 seconds it takes for this video to yeah, buffer. That's what we is, start is, with. Like, that's what we end up doing for the first 10 minutes. Uh, Wait, I want to say thanks to Eric. Yeah. He said congrats on your events this weekend. Your father is smiling Aww. down from heaven. Proud of you. Oh, Love thank that. you. It was a great turnout. Thank you so much. Good. You guys came out. I know we had a lot of people stop by saying they watched it on the show. Yeah. So that's what they stopped by. People don't realize how much work you have to put into that. So It's a lot of work. But in the end, it was amazing. We had perfect yeah. weather. It was so nice out there. We had about, you said over, I say 200, but you said over 200 people. Um, and I think we raised about 25, so we're That's still awesome. counting it. $25,000 $25 a minute. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes. Wow. Could you run $25? That's exactly. uh, yeah. that big one. Yeah. When it turns out, you can buy a steak. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, all right. Good morning to everybody wishing us good morning in the comments. A few of you are saying we have some technical difficulties right now. Uh, I don't know Classic. if that's on Facebook end or if it's on our end. If it's our end, uh, on our end, we'll get down to the bottom of it and, uh, and try to figure that out for you. In the meantime, let's get to our topic this okay. morning. So what do you think about tracking a college student's location oh, to make sure they're going to class? Ryan had this segment in our show this morning. Explain what they're trying to do over at Mizzou right now. So there's this app at Mizzou that's called Spotter EDU, and what it does is it connects to the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth um, transmitters around campus so that way your professor can know where your phone is, essentially tracking where you are. So if you're not in class, your professor knows it. They don't need to take attendance anymore to find that out. They can just see, basically, that that person is not in their class. Now, of course, there's some privacy issues here that a lot of people are raising, but the one thing that they're saying about that is that it doesn't use GPS. Uh Um, GPS, obviously, would infringe on some privacy because it could track you anywhere you go. This cannot track you once you walk off campus. So they say anyway, it would not be able to track you because it's using the campus Wi-Fi. So once you lose the campus Wi-Fi, then they cannot track you anymore. But, um, you know, the issue that I think this has to do with is more like babying than privacy Mm -hmm. because, come on, like... Not going to class is like a rite of passage yeah. in college. Right. Right. And suffering the consequences. Right. Right. Because yes. I still have nightmares about it. <laughs> Regularly. And it's picking and choosing because yeah. we had classes like you always go to yeah. go to the you gotta go to the first one, right? And in yeah. the first oh. one, generally the professor lays out the ground rules. Yeah. Of like, okay, look, this class is four exams. They're each worth 25% of your grade. Okay, fine. That means I don't have to come to any of right. your classes. Mm-hmm. However, there, some will say attendance is worth 20%. Yeah. This Quizzes. exam is worth this. That's and then you true. prioritize. You're like, all right, I cannot miss this class. Yeah. Yeah. But I could probably oh miss that gosh. class. And I can pick and choose. And that's just a matter of figuring out your time. Sure. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, frankly, there's... There's a lot of time in the day, but there's a lot of things going on in college. Yeah. And you could say, like, well, I can miss that one, and it's okay. It's not going to affect me as long as I find the time later on in the day to do this assignment or whatever it is. Um, so, I, I don't know. We have one of the, my favorite comments in the morning was, was probably the same students that had those uh, backpack leashes when they were kids. <laughs> <laughs> because it's true. Like, how long is this going to go on? Yeah, well, I know. So, yeah. that's where I was conflicted because as a mother, I'm like, oh, my God. And my initial response was, that's amazing. And then I'm like, oh, my God. Imagine if they had done that to me. Yeah. Like, yeah. my mother used to call the sorority house every night to make sure <laughs> I was in bed oh and going to sleep. But in those days, this is before. Rachel, your mom's on the phone. You just had to exactly. make sure you were there. So I would be there. Hide all the guys. I would hang yeah. up. And then shut up, shut up, shut up. Your mom's on the phone. <laughs> so we figured out the workaround. But I was like, can you imagine if they had that when I was in school? Oh. I would have been in so much trouble. Because I learned early on, never schedule class before 10 a.m. Mm-hmm. And never schedule class after 2 on Fridays. So I've yeah. learned those lessons the hard way, but I feel like that's part of the rite of passage. Totally. You, you have to out. learn it. At what point are you going to, like, cut the uh, umbilical cord? We were talking about cutting the cable cord. Cut the umbilical cord <laughs> with your parents. And how are you going to learn it if it's forced? Sure. It's one of those things that, that for no, the vast yeah. majority of people, they need to figure this stuff out on their yeah. own. Otherwise, there's no real and learning And sometimes happening. it's to disastrous end, but you mm. have to figure it. Like, we can't handhold forever yeah that's true jennifer says you know? college students are adults they need to be responsible yeah. for making it to class on time tracking them seems a bit like helicopter parenting yeah, yeah. i've got two issues that this that, that immediately come to mind that we didn't have really a lot of time to, to sink our teeth into in the show the first is what are they getting at here so mizzou's not the only school doing this ryan told us earlier that uh, like virginia commonwealth vcu and syracuse, syracuse are doing among this others well. there's a couple dozen yeah actually. what, what yeah. do they gain from this what does the university get out of it I, you know, end? I think I wonder if, and I'm just speculating here, but I wonder if professors were just going, going to administration saying, 
these dang kids right. are not showing up to class and I can't it's teach retention the subject. Rates. I got to think yeah. it's retention rates and the, the reputation of the college or university because you want to be that school that says we have a high retention. We have right. students that are not only getting in, but they're actually graduating. Right. And yeah. that's one of the keys is attendance. Great. <laughs> it increases your likelihood of graduating. Well, ideal, that's just a right? life skill in general. Half the battle is showing up. I mean, honestly, yeah. and, and that's not yeah. something I was great with in college, but we can share those stories other times. Um, the second thing that, that really came to mind is that there are two really obvious loopholes here for me that whatever ends the university seeks to to, to reach are going to be circumvented by two very obvious loopholes. One, the Russians. Well, <laughs> three now. Uh, one, the Wi-Fi. So if the campus Wi-Fi or one of their transmitters is down, um, you could always use that as, as an excuse or say my phone was not connected I to the Wi-Fi. I turned my Wi-Fi off. My yeah. Wi-Fi is off right now to work because with the crappy to, station yeah. internet. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry, I wasn't connected to the Wi-Fi. I, I forgot to turn it back on in class. class. Sure. Or two, um, I don't have my phone or my phone's not yeah. working. Right. This, it's, there's an implication that we are married to our devices. And, and while that is yeah. true and we always have our phones on us, there are times in my life that I have gone places without a phone, as crazy as that sounds. There are times that my phone has malfunctioned or been off or broken or yeah. whatever. And so all you're doing is if, if they really seek to, to do something with the information that students are in class or on campus, it's going to be circumvented by those two loopholes. They're, they're, they're yep. just easy workarounds. And do they, do they then at that point have to start paying for students' phones? Are they mandatory? Are cell phones because mandatory? Yeah. cell phones, though, yeah, we can all agree we got them, are not mandatory. No, it's not, you do not it. have to have one to be right. a citizen of the country. No. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. So, like, what, where, when are they going to force you to do that? Uh, and Nancy brings up a good point here with her comment. She says, we can all track now anyway, but it's a choice. And that, that is the thing, because... If your GPS is on, I don't know if a lot of people realize this. If your GPS is oh, on, totally. yeah. the government, the cops, <laughs> they can track where you are without a warrant. Mm -hmm. They don't need a warrant to check where you are if your GPS is on. So that's far more a privacy not, issue than this is. The privacy issue is not really is. applicable to this. No. This is more, and I'm assuming when you agree to go to this one of these universities that's doing it, there is somewhere that you're going to agree to this. You're signing to and, it. Right, yeah, you're definitely You're agreeing to it. to it. It's not like you're all yep. of a sudden at Mizzou in your second year and you're like, they've been tracking me? Yeah. I feel like you, you <laughs> would have to consent to this to be a student. Sure. Then. Uh, Susan makes a good point. She says these students are responsible for attending class. If they need to be monitored, they don't need to be in college grow up. Is that the one you just read, or is that no? A that's no. a lot of people are saying yeah, very they're saying the same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, that's a different but, one. but the point that I think Susan is trying to get here too is that not only are they adults who shouldn't need that supervision first and foremost, but secondly, you're paying them to be there. Right. And that's the other. That's the other reason mm. I ask why Mizzou cares because yeah. they're they're getting their money whether you show up or not. In fact, if you don't show up, they're getting more of your money. I was on the five and a half year plan in college. <laughs> I transferred and lost some credits granted, but I also failed some classes. And I failed classes that I did not fail because the curriculum was too difficult. I failed because I'm a truant. I failed because <laughs> I played Madden in my dorm room and ordered pizza in the afternoon he still instead does of being that. in class. Well, yeah. Not really mad. Also a valuable But you know, skill. for these yeah. universities, right, for recruiting, they want to have in their brochure that they're graduating at this rate. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that yeah, it's higher taking GPAs. you four years to graduate. You're not on a five and six year plan. That's a big part of recruiting kids to go to your university these days. Good morning to because Sue. Of the cost, too. Good morning to Ronald, too. No, that's a good point. You're trying to sell. <laughs> Amy yeah. has a solution. She said, so you send your phone with your classmate. Yeah, there you go. There hey, you go. Take this Good job. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's always the friend. I'm like, people just are gonna, take the notes yeah. for I'd me. I'd be like, I'll give you twenty dollars. Just yeah, 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 but you're gonna give up. You're gonna your you're gonna give up your phone yeah. for no. two hours, no. just so you don't no. have to go no. sit in yeah. class. You get a burner. Uh, you get a burner phone uh, or somebody's oh old gosh. iPhone fours. Now it's a new racket for the thrifty college kids oh, out there. Oh, Sell old cell phones that you can only connect to Wi-Fi. Oh my God. No text, no calls, no nothing. It just connects to the Wi-Fi. We've all got old phones lying around. That's a great point. Hey, charge them five bucks a class. I will, I'm going to bring a bag of cell phones in and connect yeah, them all exactly. to the Wi-Fi every day. That's a good little side hustle You just debunked the whole thing. I'm just saying, I'm a hustler, baby. I'm this a hustler. is how I got through college. <laughs> Beg, borrow, steal. Do what you got to do to get the grades. My best college grade in the entire five and a half year plan I was on was a 400 level African lit course. Oh. I did not buy a single book. Nor did I, a lit course. There were six texts in this class. And I was like, this is a racket. I'm not paying for it. Not only did I never buy a book, I never read a page of the book. It's not like I went to the library. Mm -hmm. I got an A plus, more than 100% in that class. Because it was a lot of forum posts. There are a lot of Sparks notes for those books online. And it's just a matter of knowing where to get the information. You do not yeah. have to play by their rules. Yeah. The grades will be what the grades will be. 
Mm. It's unfortunately more of a game than it is. But that's life skill, skill. is it not? No, no, you're totally right. It it does prepare you for life because, again, you just realize what things are important. Yes. You focus on those things. Yeah, like your job. We have to come to work every day, don't we? Yes, but they can't tell you what to do at work. They can tell you to do whatever you need to do in the I mean, confines yes, do. of the show. <laughs> but when you're down here at the traffic computer between the hours of 8 and 10.30 or whenever you leave, is there someone down here policing you and no. making sure you're not no, on No, but they're watching the clock. Uh, that's part of my job, by the way, so I yeah, am on right. Facebook. Yeah, right. <laughs> but they do Jack watch Barr the clock student. to see what time we come and go and things like that. And so, yeah, I feel like there are a lot of people you work with that I'm like, it would be really nice if maybe they had learned attendance mm-hmm. earlier mm-hmm. on. Yeah. But so some people, it's harder than others to just yeah. show up. If you don't learn it there in in college, though, and then you come into the real world, like, you mess up, you're going to get fired. That's my thing. The baby thing. Figure it out then. I'll let them figure it out. And this is this is Mizzou. I mean, we're talking about Syracuse, Mizzou, BC. Schools. These are great, great schools. journalism yeah. schools. Great journalism <laughs> schools. By the way, and it, I, I don't know. It, it just seems to me like this is this is a, a bad part of the curriculum. I, I don't think it helps people learn how to be better students. Peggy brings up a great point here. Is there, is there an age limit on this? Like, if I was going to college as an adult, would this oh be required? So, for the actually, students? at Syracuse, it's just freshmen. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, and at and it started at Mizzou as as just freshmen. Well, it started well. as members it started of the basketball for athletes, team, right? So yeah. The, and the basketball coach oh, that decided that too. he was going yeah. to create this app at Mizzou is where it began because he had some some bad class or some some bad student students athletes like that on his team. And so yeah. I think what he did was he picked out the identified them and yeah. said, "Hey, look, Here's your chance. Download this app. Prove We're to gonna me make that you're sure going to that class. you're going to class. Oh, yeah. I like that though. And so that's them. where it was created, and then it snowballed to this. Then the university was like, "Well, we're going to do it for freshmen because it helps retention." Mm-hmm. I'm sure a lot of a lot of kids. How many do you know go to college and they're like, they just go wild yeah. because right. they were the kids with the backpack leashes on in high school, <laughs> and now all of a sudden they have no idea how to handle themselves when they go off and get some freedom. So it went to freshmen. And then now it's everyone. So there was yeah. a there was like a progression of how this all. Oh worked. my gosh! I had those parents that were like, "Nope, you can't live on campus. You're gonna live at home mm-hmm. until you're done to make sure that you graduate." I was like, yeah. "Okay." So I, I had know. to go. They knew when I was leaving the house. Yeah, <laughs> you know. No, my report card went to my parents' house. I didn't wow. get it first. They got it first. I was when they used to mail it in the old postal <laughs> service. <laughs> now they. Uh, what? Where, where, how do they get them now? What do kids do now? Um, get it online. online. Yeah. You log in on your app. Is there like an app? I know. I asked There's somebody app, the other day. They're like, "Oh, yeah. we're waiting for um, to find out we get into this university." I'm like, "But you're going to be away on spring break. Are you going to get your neighbor to check the mail?" And she's like, uh, "Rachel, it's you log on and you, know, yeah. you got it." And I'm like. <laughs> Sorry. When, now, I, when we first started college, it, this is a little this is a little late in the game for these kind of shenanigans. But there were kids who pulled the I don't have a computer game mm-hmm. back then because Blackboard, which I, do, do universities still use Blackboard no. as sort of like the home base for everything. Oh, no, that's what we use. Yeah, so we I used Blackboard at both colleges I attended, and and I and there were kids know, that like, were like I don't have access to a computer, so you can't make me do these Blackboard assignments. I, I, I'm not going to go to the library every single time, and so like that you can't really say that anymore. Like if you don't have access to the internet at all. Well, they didn't uh, say that because they didn't say they didn't allow that to, to slide. I went to ASU and I started in 05 okay. and there was enough computers on campus yeah. where they were like, look, you're yeah, on campus you right access. now. Right. You have yeah. access. I don't care if you don't have a computer in your dorm room. You have yeah. access to a computer. Yeah, you got to figure it out. Get off yeah. your duff and go mm-hmm. to the library. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, we'll pause this discussion for a second. Get to our ICYMI in case you missed today in AZ this morning. You missed this. Finally, in other news, there's an influencer out there for just about everything these days, but this little guy just might be our favorite. It's a six-year-old Leo. He's the expert when it comes to Shirley Temple reviews. I love it. Non-alcoholic, don't worry. Once you see his videos, you'll understand why he's picked up more than 80,000 followers in just the last two days. Hey guys, this is Shirley Temple King. You want the two things that I love in life, Super Mario and Shirley Temple. It's kind of like... Well, I don't really like the cup because it's like plastic, but also it's kind of like they got one cherry, but they did a bit too much grenadine, so I'm going to get a flat seven. Flat seven. Can't go too heavy on the grenadine. Now, that one looks more appetizing. Glass I love cup, this though, guy. Please. Yeah, you got to have a glass. Uh, so he had only 300 Instagram followers when this week started, and we checked this morning. His account has more than 87,000 followers. I think he just picked up another one. That's the sort of stuff I need in my timeline. I need that. I do need that. <laughs> I think they gave him a plastic cup on purpose with the lid yeah. so he wouldn't spill it. Age discrimination. Yeah. 
He's an influencer now. <laughs> He's a big so owner. I can't believe his following went that high. I'm like, what do I need to do to get my following There's that just high? Niche. Uh, it's just niche. It's just niche. adorable. There's no so Shirley adorable. Temple reviewer that I'm aware of, let, let oh. alone an, an adorable kid doing it. It, it fills a niche. I'm going to start doing like SDK, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. You should. I'm like sure and how they're cut like and that. like, yeah. if you chunky peanut butter, Vanessa, smooth peanut butter. Vanessa, I think you'll, you'll be okay. Here's no the thing though, Vanessa, do you think <laughs> people will care about what you think about peanut butter sandwiches? Yes, I do. Okay, we'll mm -hmm. go for it. Because then Good that way, dream. people care now. And I'm like, I went to this restaurant to get tacos for Taco Tuesday. And they're like, please tell me how you, you like it. You went got tacos somewhere? Unreal. Oh my gosh. And then they want to know Tuesday? where it's at, you know, <laughs> and how the tacos are, if I like the salsa, if the chips are good. You know, I like it. Follow it. Vanessa for your taco yeah. reviews. Yeah, on Instagram, I'll Vanessa underscore host. <laughs> there you go. Shameless. <laughs> Always. Wait, guys, I'm excited about our fresh squeezed juice. Um, oh, I, you want to read it? I pitched this okay, today. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, so get this. Surprise! The Bella Twins no! are both pregnant and are due less than two wow. weeks apart. Same guy? <laughs> uh, John Cena awkward, and Daniel right? Bryan, presumably, oh, yeah. Oh. So the 36-year-old reality TV stars Nikki and Brie Bella revealed that they are both expecting. The baby news comes just weeks after Nikki announced her recent engagement. I'm sure oh, that so has something to do with it. Um, the Bellas say because they share everything, they're experiencing the same symptoms, mm. too. So I think they both live here. Uh, oh, do they? Yeah. The, the Bellas are in Scottsdale. Yeah, they both I live here. Um, the one's married to the wrestler. Daniel Bryan. Or there Brian you Danielson's go. Daniel. And then, yes, the other one just recently got engaged but to a Dancing with, with the Stars. But was she with John Cena? She was, but now she's in, um, engaged to a Dancing with the Stars guy. New man, new baby. Mm -hmm. We went way over today. We got to yeah. go. We got a news cut in to do on oh, the wow. show. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm sorry. So we congrats to them. Yay. The cord and whatever.